Now, wait a minute. That's not all of it. Hello? Again, on your test the last week, one of the things that continues to be a place people lose points is in the explain piece. And in the explain where you relate it back to the problem situation. So um, here we are, we've got this beautiful math our calculator helped us do, but what the heck does it mean? It means we're talking in X terms about percent sales per year. And what's this 48? 48.89. In a linear equation, that's the y-intercept. What's the y-axis? Percent total sales. So it's going down um, starting around 49% in 1998. So this value right here is a linear regression. It's not exactly what our data point says, because our points wavered. But if we were looking at a line going through those points, that's what it would back up to the y-axis at. This is the y-intercept here. This is what it's projecting for time zero. Um, if there is a linear association between the independent and dependent variables of a data set, you can use linear regression to make predictions within the data set. Using linear regression, make <laughs> predictions within the data set is called interpolation. Use your equation to predict the percent total sales for music store in 2000. Okay. Uh, they already told us in 2000, but I think what they're wanting us to do is, uh, are we, do they want us to plug it in? Yeah, so here we go. Y equals negative 2.97. We're going to plug something in here, right here. Are we going to write 2000? What are we going to do with it? We change the years slightly. We're talking about the year 2000, but that's not how we coded years on it's our X. Two. It's two. Where did Andy get the two? From when we first numbered. From when we first numbered. Where was our starting value or our zero? 98. So year 2000 is year two if we're starting at 1998. So I'm going to put negative 2.97, I'm going to replace the x with 2, plus 48.89. On. Clear. Negative 2 point, whoops, I forgot my point, point 0.97 times 2 plus 48.89. So they asked me about 2000. I'm going to use this equation to see what it says about 2000, but I'm putting in a 2 here, 2000, two years away from our starting year. Enter. Forty-two point nine five. Compare the predicted percent to the actual percent. Predicted percent is the one we just did. Where do we find the actual percent? Over on the table. Brody, look on the table. Find year 2000. 42.4%. 42. 42.4%. So pretty darn close. Again, our equation is an equation if those dots were exactly in a line. And they're kind of a little bit crooked. So the equation is the exact line, but it's not the actuality. There are some little fluctuations up and down. Use your equation to predict the percent total music sales in stores in 2003. 
What does 2003 relate to in terms of our X? Five. Five. Go ahead, please. Load five into our equation, just like I did with two, and use your calculator to find the theoretical uh, or predicted percent in five years. I'm going to walk around. Good job. I'm seeing people using the equation. I saw this with a 5 in for the year. What are we getting for a number? 30 point. Oh, 04, so I'm just going to put zero. Compare the predicted percent in 2003 to the actual. Predicted, 34.0. Actual, 33.2. Okay, so again, pretty close, a tiny bit off. Flip the page. Number 10. <coughs> um, Tony, could you read 10 for us? Interp interpolation. Would we see? Were they close? How about the word always? What should we say? What? It is sometimes close. It's hard to say if it will always be close. Now, interpolation is looking at the data that we had and looking at it more closely compared to the line that would go through the data. Extrapolation is something different. Extrapolation is going way further out in years or backing it farther up in years. Notice, oh, there we go. Uh, they give you some years now, 2010, 2020, and 1900. Those are way far away from the little six-year data set that we had. Two are in the future of the data, and one is in the past compared to the data. We're going to use the same equation and plug them in, but one of the first things we got to do is convert that year into the marker that we've been using. What was our zero? 1998. So we're going to have to figure out how far away is that from 1998. Here's what you got to do first. 2010 minus 1998. How far away is that? Twelve. 
12, 20, 20, minus 1998, and 1900 minus 1998. If that's 12, this is 22. 22. Okay. And this one's going to be interesting. But 1900 minus that, I heard it, negative 98. How do you have negative time? Remember, it's earlier than the time of our thing. So it's back years in the past from the time of our total. Okay, these two tables right here, you get A. These two tables, you get B. Those two tables, you get C. You're plugging them into your equation. Eighth grade, pick. I'm walking around. Oh. You have a calculator. Set up your problem first. Are we ready? Okay, in 2010, what do we have, folks, for 2010? Percent from stores. 2020. Twenty-five, forty-five, forty-five. Yeah. From stores. Okay, nineteen hundred. What do we have? Three hundred and thirty-five. Thirty-nine percent from stores. So there is a little bit of a problem. Yes. Our equation gave us some mathematical answers that don't really make sense in the problem. Is it possible to have negative sales? Negative sales would have you went to the store and paid money to give them music. That's the opposite of what normally happens, okay? Is it possible to have 339% of sales? Okay, so this equation works within a certain range. But if we try and go too far ahead or too by, far behind, we can calculate it, but it doesn't make sense. Okay, we're at about what we can do for today. I uh, need calculators here, books there, and you have a homework packet to work on. Start thinking about your stats project, please. Oh, you are just looking at one of those
over here before we leave. Jacqueline, do you have one? Okay, hold on, we're still missing quite a few. Right. Okay, we're good. Go, Mr. Craig.